Hello! This video is a follow-up to my haul video from yesterday. During my hunt, I was very lucky and came across Sergeant Creel and the special edition George Lucas in Stormtrooper disguise. In that video, I had people comment on which figure I should review first and overwhelmingly, Creel was chosen. So, special thanks to everyone who had commented, namely Tim Ulevich, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Mitch Allen, Stomp Day Trees, Shakes the Clone, The Thrip, and RR138. RR1138. Thank you guys. So, on with the review. I am going to do a double review that includes the George Lucas Stormtrooper. The Georgie Stormy is interesting, not because of the Lucas gimmick. For me, this figure presents an opportunity to expand on my Stormtrooper army because in theory, it should be identical to the regular 2020 Stormtrooper mold. Currently, it is getting harder to come by a regular Stormtrooper figure, so this Lucas Stormtrooper is very welcome. Also, I can put it side by side with the Sergeant Creel to identify any new parts that was employed for that figure. So. On with the packaging. For George, this is interesting how they went with the Stormtrooper image for the card back. I am not a historian when it comes to Kenner toys, but brief research shows that it tries to emulate the 1977 Stormtrooper release. Of course, some graphic aspects have been modernized, such as the H4 Plus label and the Lucasfilm 50th anniversary logo. You can see the pillbox right, George Lucas in Stormtrooper disguise, and a trademark logo next to Stormtrooper. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't know the word Stormtrooper is trademark, so good for them. The back is a very nice archive image of George himself in production, standing next to a sand trooper. Next to the photo, there is a blurb honoring George, and it's real nice we're doing this when the guy is still well on life. As for Creel, this is the packaging. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is actually the first of the comic book series figure I picked up. So I am seeing this with fresh eyes. I usually throw away my boxes, but I might consider saving this one. By the way, Black Chrysanthemum was also in the store when I went, but due to the sketchy nature surrounding its design, I did not pick it up. I just don't want to support that. But yeah, for Creel, every surface is plastered with comic art, and I'm loving it. The blurb is on the inside of the flap right now. What I also found interesting is there are some questions regarding the character's size. Some artists render Creel as big and bulky, while others make him look like a regular sized human. The figure is made to the scale of a regular person, so the package artists diplomatically select images that reflect the size. No doubt, if they included the big bulky one, I'm sure there's going to be fans that would not find that a good thing. And, you know, rightfully so too. My only gripe about this box is the surface is quite slippery, and I found myself accidentally dropping this box numerous times, resulting in a lot of ding corners. But you can blame this on my own stupidity. So, let's rip these guys out of the box. Okay, so first I'm gonna have to verify whether George Lucas Stormtrooper is in fact identical to the regular Stormy. I'm gonna have a little fun with you guys, so here goes. Okay, let's call out. Which one do you think is George? Now, if you guess wrong, you have to down a shot. You ready? <clears throat> now, if you think this one is George, you are correct. So this could actually make for a pretty fun drinking game, as you could imagine. But really, the verdict is out. If you like the 2020 Stormtrooper and you're having trouble getting your hands on it, 
you can legitimately go for George and have the exact same thing. Once the helmet is on, the head is pretty well hidden. It fits well, but in order to take them on and off, you might have to twist them on and off like this. It's a bit of a pain, but doable. But if you're getting this figure to add on to your Stormtrooper core, there are some minor differences you need to be aware of. First, the blaster is painted in a gunmetal silver, whereas the original Stormtrooper is a plain black plastic. Second, because the regular Stormtrooper comes with a bald Tamira Morrison head sculpt while George has hair, when the helmet is on George, it will sit higher. So if you're obsessed about uniformity, you will have to chop down George's hair so it will fit the same height. Obviously, do that only if you're not intending on removing the helmet. One thing about this figure, or at least mine particularly, is the torso armor tends to ride up and down. If this bothers you, I suggest gluing it down carefully. As for the likeness, well, you could tell it's George because of the white hair and beard, but it's more like a caricature of George rather than the exact replica of George himself. I think it's because George has been around for a long time and you really don't know which era George Lucas you're getting. Plus, Lucas has a bit of a double chin and it will be difficult to do that while trying to allow the helmets to fit over its head. So it's fine, it, the likeness is there. I can see why Hasbro opted to release George in a Stormtrooper disguise instead of a full-on George and civilian clothing. At least here you have a troop builder that can result in multiple sales. So Hasbro has made some pretty baffling business decisions, but this one's actually quite clever. Alright, so Creel. Sergeant Creel is based off of a comic book arc that, um, well, you know what? Actually, I, I, I don't know. I never read the comics. But hey, it makes for a nice figure. Many people were surprised it came with many new parts because historically, novelty figures such as these are notorious for their reuse and repaints. Let's start with taking a tally of the new parts. Looking at this figure, one major part is the upper torso armor which appears smooth without the pectoral renditions of the original Stormtrooper design. It also has a jet slash rocket integrated onto the back. The pauldron is a reuse, which is a shame because in the comics it's not really a pauldron, but more like an extra shoulder armor. The mid torso is a reuse, just painted black down the front center. On the arms and legs, you have these add-ons that fit over the original body. So for those of you who thought this is a new arm and leg armor, no, um, they're just add-ons. But it's okay. It, it does its job. Only minus here is that they tend to slip around too much, so I might glue them down later. As for the hip, I thought they'd employ the same tactics as the arms and legs with just the tacked on pieces. But no, it's actually a new mold. You notice in the back there are some different pouches along the belt, while the original mold has to be modified to receive these new strapped and um, well, well actually, you know what, what do you know? There is actually a holster here for the blaster rifle. It fits the rifle really well and snug. And of course, we have a green lightsaber for Creel. I am not a lightsaber expert, so I don't know whose lightsaber it is a reuse of, but frankly, I don't really care. For articulation, Creel and George are both based on the 2020 Stormtroopers, so I won't dedicate too much time to it. For the new collectors watching this video, all I have to say is this mold is famous for very good articulation, so you could achieve poses like this. Overall, I think Creel is a nice figure and it will be a nice addition to your trooper collection with enough variety for it to stand out. It is a shame though that Hasbro didn't go for the larger interpretation, but this gives me an opportunity to consider doing a custom using Wrecker as a base. You can see with a Stormtrooper helmet, you can achieve a similar proportion to the larger Creel. So I hope you enjoyed this video. 
I heard that this figure is on its way to the US, so I hope you guys will get it soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all later.